What's going on guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to go over one of the simplest type of questions to solve on the SAT and that is going to be synthetic division. These questions show up on the SAT pretty often and these are actually really simple questions to solve. However, not many people can recognize these questions so they try like all these crazy stuff and they just spend a lot of time and they end up missing the question and losing points. However, if you watch this video till the very end you're going to know exactly how to recognize these questions and how to solve each of these questions and start raising your SAT score. Guys, this thing is a full freaking package, so I highly recommend you stick to the very end, and if you're ready to get started, smash that like button, and let's get straight into this video. As always, we're going to go over four things in this video. First one is going to be what you have to know for synthetic division. Second is what types of questions are out there. Third, how to recognize these questions. And fourth, how to solve all of these questions with a one simple trick. So what do these synthetic division questions look like? Well, they look something like this. They are always going to have an equation over an equation. You see right there, you see how the top, it has an expression, at the bottom, it also has an expression. Same thing for all of these questions. And whenever you see that, there's a very high chance that it's going to be a synthetic division question. And these types of questions, what are they really testing you on? You just need to know two things. And that is, first one is going to be just doing regular synthetic division, how to divide polynomial by a polynomial. If you know how to do that, you're going to be set. And second is going to be a remainder theorem. So if you're not really sure what remainder theorem is, I wouldn't really worry too much about it because about 85% of the questions that show up on the SAT is just based on just dividing expression by an expression. So synthetic division takes about 85%. A remainder theorem shows up really rarely, about 15% of the time. I haven't seen it for the past couple months. It doesn't show up in the SAT as often. So if you're running out of time, then I just recommend you focusing solely on synthetic division. But if you have extra time, then you can go over remainder theorem as well in order to answer every single question and be full bulletproof. So now that we know exactly what type of questions are tested on synthetic division, how do we know when to use synthetic division? Well, let's go to these questions. So the first thing I told you about was they're going to have an expression over expression, right? So if it's this case, um, there's about like 50% chance that it's going to be about factoring and about 50% chance it's going to be about synthetic division. But how can we be really sure that it's going to be testing you on synthetic division? That is, look at the answer choices, okay? If you look at the answer choices, you see how that they have these little weird fractions right here and all of these fractions have a common denominator. And these denominators also come from the question's original denominator. So these things are known as the remainders, okay? And if they have a remainder in a, any of the choices, there's going to be a about 157% chance, exactly 157% chance it's going to be on synthetic, ooh, synthetic division. So if it's like polynomial at top and bottom, about 50-50 chance it's going to be synthetic division. But if they have a remainder in the choices, it's going to be 157% chance that it's going to be synthetic division. So now that we recognize them, how can we actually solve them? And it's actually really simple. You just do synthetic division and that's it. So let's go to this question right here. If you look at it, it says, which of the following expression is equivalent to this one right there? And if you look at it, there's going to be a polynomial and a polynomial at top and bottom. And if that's the case, there's a very high chance it's gonna be synthetic division. It's gonna be about 50% factoring and 50% synthetic division. But if you look at all the choices down here, what they have is going to be a remainder. They all have remainder, which means it's not going to be factoring, it's going to be a synthetic division. So don't even bother trying to factor the top um, and try to cross out the bottom. Don't even try that. It's going to be a synthetic division question. So how do we do synthetic division? Well, let me erase that first. Synthetic division is also very simple as well. And what you do is just copy top and bottom. So you're dividing the top portion, which is going to be x squared minus 2x minus five divided by x minus three, okay? And what you do is you just ask yourself, okay, there's an x right here, and what can I multiply to this x in order to make it x squared, right? So what do you have to multiply to x? You just multiply x to it to make it x squared. So what we do after that is we distribute that to the entire thing. So x minus three times x is gonna be x squared minus three x. And after you do that, you just subtract the whole thing. So what happens? x squared minus x squared is going to be zero, minus two x minus minus three x, which becomes just a plus, and it's going to be a plus x, right? That means the zero is just going to go away because, I mean, zero is just nothing, right? And before we move on to the next step, we have to bring this five down because if you look at it, originally we are dividing by x minus three, and x minus three has two terms in it. There's x and there's three in it. But if we only had x 
it's not going to work. We have to have two terms if you're dividing by two terms. That's why we have to bring this 5 down right here. So after you bring it down, you ask yourself again, okay, in order for me to get this x to look like this x right there, what do I have to multiply by? This one is actually simple. It's just plus 1. So if you do plus 1 right there and then distribute it, what's going to happen is going to be x minus 3, right? And if you subtract it, it's going to become x minus x. It's going to be 0. And minus 5 minus minus 3, it's going to be plus 3 or plus 3. And it's going to become minus 2. Okay, and as we know, zero will just go away and we're just left with minus two. And you ask yourself again, can we make x go into minus two by any means? And the answer is no, we can't do it anymore, which means our minus two is going to be a, a remainder because we can't simplify it anymore. So how can we write our answers out? It's gonna be x plus one, which is the top portion right there. And then what you do is you bring out the remainder plus minus two, which is the remainder right there divided by your original denominator, which is going to be x minus 3, x minus 3, okay? And to simplify this out, this minus right here is going to be x plus 1 minus 2 over x minus 3, okay? And the answer is just going to be this thing right here. And which answer choice it looks like that? Minus 5, minus 5, nope. It's only going to be this one. So that's how you can quickly find out the answer to synthetic division questions. If you can recognize to use synthetic division, solving itself is going to be super easy. You might be asking, is there a faster way to solve this question? And answer is yes. Let me show you the secret trick. So if you look at the question, we already know it's going to be synthetic division because every single one of them has a remainder in it, right? And if you look at the remainders carefully, all of them have different remainders, right? So if we can find out exactly, if we can quickly find out what the remainder is without having to do all that crazy work, then we would know exactly what the answer is because as long as our remainders match up, this has to be the answer, right? So you might be asking, how can we find this remainder quickly? And that is where remainder theorem comes in. So remainder theorem, okay? It's the shortcut to find the remainder. And how does remainder theorem work? Well, here's what you do. First, you ask yourself, uh, what's the number that makes the bottom or the denominator equal to zero, okay? So if you look at it, our denominator is x minus three. So x minus three, it has to equal zero. X would have to be three, right? When x is three, our denominator would be equal to zero. And after you found out this value, what you do is you plug it back to the top, plug it to the top. Okay, or the numerator, okay? And if you look at it, it's x squared minus 2x minus 5. And what we do is we just plug in this 3 right here into the x's, okay? So what's going to happen is it's going to be, uh, not x, it's going to be 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 5. And 3 squared is 9 minus 6 minus 5. And that's going to be 3 minus 5, which is going to equal minus 2, right? And the result that you get from plugging in the number that makes the bottom equal to zero, that is going to be your remainder. So minus two, we know that it's going to be our remainder. And that makes sense because it's the exact same question. And if you look at the previous one, we got the two or minus two as our remainder, right? So we know this method works and our remainder is going to be minus two. And if you look at all the choices, A has remainder of 20, so it's out. B is 10, nope, eight, and minus two. D is the only one that has the remainder of minus two, which means we can quickly find our answer that way as well. But one thing to keep in mind is that this method is not always going to work. It's only gonna work under certain circumstances. If you look at these two questions right here, the, our original question have different remainders for every single one of them. But if you look at this new question right there, they, I mean, there's two choices with remainders, but they have the exact same remainder, which means even if we find out what the remainder is, we're still going to be stuck between these two choices, which means we're going to still have to do the synthetic division in order to find out exactly what the right answer is. Okay, so if you can recognize that all the remainders are different, then you can use remainder theorem to quickly find out the answer. But if that if the remainders are the same, then you probably won't be able to use it. So just stick to regular synthetic division. Does that make sense? So that's literally everything you have to know about synthetic division. As long as you know how to do these two things, you are going to be set.
okay? So we're gonna summarize exactly what we went over in this video. First, we went over exactly what we have to know and what types of questions that we should expect from synthetic division. The first type was just regular synthetic division and second one was the use of remainder theorem. And just know that most of these synthetic division questions are gonna require you to use division. As long as you know how to do that, you're going to be set remainder theorem. It could help you, but it's not going to be a must. So if you're running short on time, I would recommend you just focus on synthetic division. For some people, maybe this was really simple. For some people, maybe this is like eye-opening, like they've never seen this before. And if you would like to learn more in depth, going to more step-by-step -step guide and doing these synthetic division questions, then go to the description box down below and it's gonna take you to a private lecture. And within this lecture, you're gonna get three different things. And the first one is you're going to get a full-size lecture going over exactly what you need to know for the SAT synthetic divisions and how to do them and the tricks that you can use to solve them super quickly. And second, you're also gonna get a worksheet that goes along with the lecture so you can follow along, like print them out, follow along and do the questions with me so you really understand exactly what you need to know. And lastly, you're gonna get a set of practice questions which you can try after finishing the lecture and test to see if you have retained everything you need to know for synthetic division. So that's going to be a wrap for today's video, guys. If you guys found this video helpful or like the video, then smash the like button. But if you guys love this video and would love to see more of it, then I highly recommend you subscribe to this channel because every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3.30 p.m., I release these videos exactly summarizing what you need to know for the SAT so you won't have to flap through these SAT prep books for hours and hours to learn exactly what you need to know. And when I say hopeful, I mean, they're like really helpful for some reason. I mean, based on the feedback I'm getting, people say that I've been studying for the SAT for a long time and these videos are the only thing that's been helping me get better at math sections. And someone also told me that they were leaving questions blank and they were running out of time on math sections. But after watching all of these videos and really make like absorbing all the information in here, on the November SAT that just happened like a couple days ago, they were able to solve every single question and have like 10 minutes left over. And that's pretty crazy. I mean, if it's working for other people, there's a very high chance that it's also gonna work for you as well, as long as you put in the work. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video and I'll see you guys on the next one.